This conference will now be recorded. Thank you. So yeah, mm. so we saw Lesson Dictionary. Today we will see a uh, introduction to Python statements. Why we have statements and what it does. All those things we will see. So the first thing what we will see is the basic one. If else if and else statement in Python. So we have already used multiple times if condition in our code. Like uh, in many of our program we have used if condition. Um, let me open. So we have if and l here, um, but I wanted to uh, tell completely about what is if l and how to use it. So uh, if it's like verbally, we can imagine we are telling the computer, hey, if this case happens, perform some action. We can then expand the idea further with else if, that is l if in Python, we have to write it as l if. So with else if and else statement which allows us to tell the computer what it has to do like hey if this happens perform some action else if another case happens perform some other action else if none of the above case happen perform this action uh, so it's like that if is like that so let's go ahead and look at the syntax format for if statement so to get a better idea So it's like this if case one let me copy paste it. So it's like this if case one perform this action one, if a case two perform this else, if none of the cases matching, then perform this. So it's like this, if true, So I'm telling if true, so it should be in capitalized. Okay. So if true, print this. What is this true? You remember what is this true called? Anybody? Boolean. It, yeah, it's Boolean. So true and false are Boolean, right? So with if condition, you should always give only Boolean because it uh, it can check whether only it is true or false. So I am directly giving true here. Otherwise, what I'll do, I'll check some, com I'll do some comparison, like double equal to comparison operator or greater than equal to less than equal to. So I do some comparison, whether this is this, whether one is equal to one. So in case of if, True, I can give one is equal to one. So it's telling it was true and it, it was also true. So what this one is equal to one is it is comparing something, performing a comparison operation. What comparison returns? Always comparison returns only Boolean value, right? So here we are comparing if input is none. We are checking whether the input is empty or not. If it is empty, 
we are going to tell the list is empty. That just looks totally wrong. Okay. So uh, either we do the comparison directly or we call some function which does the comparison and returns true or false. Maybe at the end of the function, we are doing some comparison. In case of uh, checking palindrome, in, inside the function, we were checking whether the original string is equal to reverse string. We do the comparison and return that. So what does the original string double equal to reverse string return? It's a comparison. Uh, in that case, it returns true or false only. So the function is returning true or false. The output of the comparison is Boolean. The output of the function is then Boolean. So it is returning Boolean. So if can evaluate only Boolean. So when the when the Boolean is returned here, when we call the function, let me open that palindrome. So here in this case, we are directly uh, using the comparison here, double equal to. So something we got from function, the function is returning the reverse output. So we are get, we are checking whether the original input is equal to reverse input. So at the end, what is Boolean, what this comparison operation results, it returns either true or false. If it returns true, it will execute whatever is there under if. Else, if it is false, it goes to the else block and print whatever is inside the else. It ignores whatever is there inside if. Let me open. So here what I can do, I can change the logic. So here instead of returning clean str, what I can do is I can So I'm returning this comparison. I'm checking whether the clean SCR, which is the input, which is nothing but input, the converted lower converted input. And this is the slice input, which is reversed. So if both are, I'm just returning this comparison. So what happens? It com does the comparison and ret returns the output of this comparison. The output of this comparison is true or false, which is Boolean. So here, instead of doing the check, what I'll do, I'll just call the function if a palindrome of user input. Let me say this. So it's palindrome. So what's happening is we're just calling a function, but this function ultimately returns a Boolean value, whether true or false. So if 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 condition can evaluate only true or false, okay. So one more example is x is equal to false. And I'm giving if x X was not true. So let's see what happens. So this, the, it was true. 
and it is also true here x was not true so let me change it to true so here it is returning at x was true so here let's see a multiple branch with an nested structure writing a nested because I have one more else condition So here what we are doing we have a variable so we are checking whether the variable is having this value inside it if it has then the output of this comparison is true so if it's true it will go and do this and after doing this it will come out of all the structure and come to line number 18 okay so if it's false it will go and check do this else if it again what it does it does one more check if this check is true, it will print line number 15. Whatever is there in line number 15, it does that. And after doing line number 15, it comes to line number 18 directly. Otherwise, if it's true, it will go to line number 15 and then the control will come to line number 18. It will come out of if, because the if is already done. If one if one condition is true and one of the action is performed, that's all it comes on outside the if structure. If this is also not true if in case line number 14 also returns false so in that case it goes and evaluates the next condition only when it's false it goes and checks the next condition otherwise it does whatever action is under that particular block and it comes out of it okay so let me save so here it is telling welcome george because it, it doesn't print this it directly goes and prints this let me change it to coolin so it is not executing line number 13 not 15 and it directly executes 17 so either you can use boolean value in if else statement or a comparison which returns a boolean value or you can call a function which also should return a boolean value you can't do any other uh, operation here for example
so only line number 20 is printed line number 23 is not printed because this is not true 1 minus 3 is not equal to 4 right Guys, any doubts and if you can ask now if you have any doubt or you can type it in the message box. In if statement we are not giving one plus three equal to four or something, but how is accepting the twentieth uh, statement? So here it's not actually, it couldn't uh, find anything which is called false. So here it is it trying to do one plus rule. It is able to do that, but there is no way that it could find false for it. So okay. even it couldn't find any true, but it couldn't find any false. So it is going inside this line number 20. Okay. So here guys, can I give x double equal to 3, this comparison? Y double equal to 3, can I give this here? Yes, no. Yeah, we don't have Y, so we can't give that. There is no such thing called Y is declared before. At least I can give X because though it is not an integer, it ha the at least the variable X is there for the Python to go and check what is there inside the memory. But we can't give Y, right? So the line number 20 was not printed because x contains a value called true but this is 3 true is not equal to 3 they are not same so it is false since it's false it's ignoring this line coming out of if condition is it clear Okay, so now we have one quiz. Will this line work or it will prove any error? Guys, this is a basic function, print and input. I hope you already know you, you're, you're like expert in print and input. So tell me, will this line work? If not, why? If so, why? Please don't execute in your system. Just take a guess. We'll play like a fun game. What comes to your mind? Tell me that. It will work. Okay. How does it work? Which which will be printed first? Whether the alu will be printed first or the input will be printed first?
input will be printed first why why the input will be printed first Rajna, could you explain because i see print is at the first place and i see hello first but why does the input printed first maybe the inside uh, method will execute first nesting mm -hmm. something like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try this out. What is asking what's your name then it is telling hello no? so um guys let me explain what happens is for example print So what happens in the background? So for this line you understood, right? Addition of X and Y is, is this, it prints this and it finds what is the value of X plus Y. So X plus Y is three plus four. It replaces three plus four here, then it prints this, right? Again here it goes and checks what is there inside Z, um, Z is having some operation. So it again checks what is Y, what is X and what is Y because they are variable names. So it goes and checks the memory of x and y and gets a value and replace it here so it becomes 3 plus 4 here then it does the operation 3 plus 4 and saves that into z and then that z is printed here saved here replace here for example so here the 7 is replaced here by z and then it prints this so that's the same thing happening here it's uh, trying to print hello but after that it saw this so then what it does it evaluate this line so this is nothing but input so this is printed and i got the output the output is saved here instead of input whatever we got uh, it got replaced and was replaced here then it prints hello on let's execute this so here you see addition of x and y is 7 and addition of x and y is 7 so here here it does the operation here it goes to z and it does the operation here and replaces the value here only after that it produce first it proceeds with this addition of x and y only later it sees some operation so it thinks okay let me finish that first and get the value and save it here then again print it so there is some uh, sometimes it, it might be confusing why uh, python is doing this way because when if they ask me uh, when I was learning Python, if they had asked me this, I would have said it won't work or I would have said hello will be printed first. I never, it never occurred to me that input would print first in the beginner phase. So there is something called, let me, There is some tool called Thony. So this is that Thony.org. 
here you have to choose which i click on this download and then here let me change the size for a while yeah here it is contributor here you see a uh, list of zip and tar files so here you see a list of zip and tar and dot exe so you can download one of that and you can have it in your local once you run that in your local the application will look like this So it will look like this. So I have uh, opened that Tony dot py here, and then what I do, I have to save. I have to if if you want to know how the that particular program is executing the the order in which it is executing, you just have to write your program here and save it. Once you save it, you will see the debug script. First, let me run. So it's asking what's my name, and I give this. It prints it. Then I can go to this debug. debug and after you go to debug there is something called step in and step out step over okay so first i'll first step is it it reads this line second step what it does it first step it reads this line first it reads hello then first it sees a print statement then it goes and reads what's inside print hello because it couldn't read completely because there is a comma so it knows this is something which can be printed directly and the remaining is some operation or something so it reads this first then it understood its hello there was no error then it goes to input it read this part so here it is asking here what this input does it ask uh, computer to print this output and get the input from the print whatever is there in the um, sorry so it ask computer to print this prompt message and get the input and pass the input here right so it reads this input then it reads what is there inside input and what it does then next step it prints the prompt message okay then you got this here so i am giving anu and give enter so anu is replaced instead of that input correct anu is replaced with single quote see and then what happens next step it reads the print statement again and then it prints hello hello and after that it's none none means it's empty that's all there is nothing in the program to execute it stop the execution here understood so this is commented right it's like um, it's like not a message or command to the program or uh, to the computer so it ignores the commented one it directly go to x is equal to 3 and saves the value 3 into the x then it goes to the next line x is equal to 
it saves the value 4 into y. Then it reads the next line, line number 5, which is print. Then it reads the first part. So it, the double quotes is now replaced with single quotes. So it is going to, it is just printing it. Okay, it understood this is a string. And next part is x plus y. Now it is searching what is x. Replaces it with 3 and y. It replaces it with 4. And then it does that. It does this operation 3 plus 4 and replaces it with 7. Then it reads the complete print again. And it is printing addition of x and y is 7. Now it replaced with none. So it has nothing to execute after this point. So already it does the operation on line number five that uh, z is equal to x plus y it has seven inside it inside the variable called z so it directly replaces it and the output is printed it changed to none So uh, whenever you have some doubt like how this is executed and which order it is going, you can download this and you can have this. You can put your program and you can check how it is going. It will not tell you. I mean, it, it has some restriction. It can tell only the order of execution. You cannot expect it to find a bug for you like what is wrong with your program. But at least to, to some point, you can go and see till where it is working fine. Okay. Let me do one thing. Let's see. Okay. So seven double equal to white is false, right? So it's replace, replacing it with false. Since it false, it comes out of if condition. There is nothing out of it after line number eight. So the execution is chopped. It's true. So it's printing. It's going to print this. At least it is going inside that if condition, whatever the logic inside if condition, it is going and executing them, trying to process it. Mm, let me do one thing. So it directly gives you error. So if you have any bug inside your program, then you can't you can't do this. Only when you have some bug free, but your logic is not working. So the program is executing, but the output what you're expecting is not what you see in the system. So the, you don't know where you missed your logic. So in that case, you can go and check how it's going and what's happening inside Python, okay? So here I have to fix the error, then it would work. So it's so cool, you can go and execute all your program and see the order, how it's happening. So now next topic is for loop. Let's see what is for for loop in Python. So here the for loop acts as an iterator. So guys, you have any doubts in if our Tony, whatever we saw till now, we can uh, um, clarify it before we move on. Please say yes or no. Uh, 
uh, you can download any version i don't remember when because i have uh, installed it long back you can you can try installing anything you try installing anything and if it's not working let me know i'll help you to figure it out so guys any doubts or is it clear please tell us or no so that i'll know whether to proceed okay thank you so now we are going to see for loop loop means uh, it is going to execute the same thing again and again the, with, with the word english term loop this is what we understand right we are going in the loop we are doing going in the same same path again and again uh, so for a for loop acts as an iterator in python it goes through the item that are in sequence or any other iteratable item iteratable iteratable item means one after other there is a sequence so here the general format for for loop in python is look like this mm, sorry so it will look like this for every item in an object there may be multiple item so for every item execute this chuck so for each item it does the same thing so uh, maybe like uh, your teacher in your classroom you have a attendance at the end, at the start of uh, every class and uh, what the teacher does it she goes through all the name one by other and uh, she will be asking whether such percent present in the classroom or not for example tilly are you present sirisha are you present sam are you present it will go like that right so it is a repeated process one after other she is picking one after other name and she is asking repeating the same action so what she what is action here she is asking um, calling the name and then she is asking is that per, per person is present or not based on the um, why she gets that from tilly if tilly is telling that yeah yeah ma'am i am present then she marks something in, inside that attendance that yeah this person is present on this particular day so she uh, calls one after other and then she does some action seeing one after other name she does some action and based on the output you give she is marking it down in the attendance sheet so it's something like this Uh, so for every item in the object, the, maybe you can consider the object as an attendance book, which has multiple names inside it. Example: ten different students, and it, she is calling for every student. She has to call and ask if that student is present or not. So this is what for loop does. The variable name used for the item, you can you can. you said uh, you can give any variable name whatever variable you have you can give that variable here this is all user defined whatever you have in your program in the previous lines based on that you can pass your variable in variable name here okay so for example so i am creating a list so here what happens i have a variable called list and it contains list inside it so i'm using that list here but this num no instead of num i can give x i can give y i can give anything here e n y x but the same thing should be used inside the logic whatever you mention here no it should be used here 
so if i have a attendance record and there are multiple names inside the attendance i can i can tell that there are 20 students or i can tell there are 20 names inside that attendance sheet or i can tell 20 person everything is fine there are 20 different names i can call them as a name or person or students anything i can do so it's like that only so uh, i am telling it is a number whatever is there inside the list every element i am calling it as a number and I have to refer it as a number throughout this for loop. Whatever logic you write inside the for loop, you have to use the same number, whatever you use here. Okay. So let's see. So for the every element, what happens is first uh, this read set, then it comes to line number two for number and list. So for every element, it prints number. So it goes one after other number, and then it print it does this action. So all the number are printed here. Let's see this in Tony. So it first reads the list, then sees what is the value inside that variable. It saves everything. It reads everything means it's reading and saving everything. So this is done. It goes to the next part. So it sees list one. So it knows number is nothing but some user defined name. So it goes, this is an object. So it goes to an object and it replaces with the value of an object. And then for here, for num in, it picks the first value in the object. One, print one, then none. Then again, it goes to the line number two. So after printing this, it has nothing to do in, inside the for loop. So it goes, comes outside and again goes to line number two. So for loop is like, it will rotate like this. It will go in the loop until it finds nothing to do. So again, here it prints two so it goes on till six that's all it it has nothing to do in it has nothing inside list so here also it is none so it is after that it's shopping the program got it Guys, you un you understood the basics of uh, for loop, like how it's happening, uh, or did you understand how how do we syntactically represent it? Like why we have for here, why we have in here, why we have number list one. Did you understand the statement? If you have any doubts in the statement, you can ask me. So first thing is you have to understand the statement and understand the logic how this is happening. So this for and in our keyword, it should always be for here, it should always be in here. This is an object where you store your sequence, where you have um, multiple sequence and here it's a number. Uh, this num is a name you give for each element in the sequence. Okay. So let's uh, add an if statement to check if for even number, okay? Um, so what I'm going to do, there is a list and I want to hear this program is printing every number, but I'm going to add a logic like I will check if the number is even number. Only if it is even, it is going to print, otherwise it will not print. So that logic I have to add. So guys, how do you, uh, before going to for loop, uh, first we have to find a logic on, how to find if a number is even or not do you have any idea like how to find uh, how to i mean i'm not asking in terms of programming i'm just asking what are the steps we have to follow to know if the number is even or not in real world what do you do if i ask if 50 is even or not what is the answer you will tell if the number is, is divisible by two, if the reminder is zero, we can tell that is even. Correct, yeah. So if it is 50, then it is even number because if you divide it by, but what I do generally, <laughs> um, 
I I see what is the last digit of the number five zero 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 two three sorry zero two four six eight. If if the last number is that, then it's obviously even number. If it has only one digit and it comes like this two four six eight, then it's an even number. But uh, mathematically, I will I'll do only that in my mind. But mathematically, what is the operation is you have to divide that number by two. If you divide the number by two, there won't be any remainder. The remaining remainder will be zero. For example, if you divide three by two, if you divide the number three by two, the remainder will be one, right? Right. But if you divide four by two, the remainder will be zero. So let's see that here. So for this dividing and checking the number, I'll go and use modulo because modulo is going to give me reminder directly. It what the modulo operation does, it divides the number and return me the reminder. So for example, three modulo two, then the reminder is one. Four modulo two, reminder is zero. So the logic here is, if the name if a number is what the logic I'm going to use is if a number modulo 2, I'm going to use this operation number modulo 2, like 3 modulo 3, 3 modulo 2, whatever we use it here, no? So what I'm going to do, number modulo 2, if the output of this is 0, then it's an even number. Otherwise, it's an odd number, isn't it? So here I have a list. Um, so here I have to add some check. So what do I do? To do uh to do some check what what do you do in python if you want to check something how do you do that in python if you want to check whether the end modulo is zero how do i check yeah because see here i have directly written if i have directly mentioned in in normal english uh phrase also we mentioned that if end modulo Two is zero. So directly we can use if here. If here we have number, right? It's not n, it's number. If number modulo two is double equal to zero, we are doing a comparison. If it's output of number modulo two is zero, then print number. Otherwise, you don't have to print it. So it is printing only the even number. So I I want to enhance this logic. I want to uh, tell that. So we are printing, we are skipping one because it's not even. So we are skipping it. But I want to inform that this is an odd. That's why we didn't print. And later this is even I'm printing. Then again here I want to tell that it's an odd number. So I'm not printing it. Right. So here I will add a logic called else. So instead of one, it's printing, it's an odd number. Or I can So here I am telling clearly one is an odd number, two is an even number. It goes like this. It checks every number in the list and it's printing the output here.
so the next thing what we are going to see is uh, we are going to do some uh, tally running tally using multiple loops so let me open new file So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one. So the program, what they're expecting is they will be giving a list of number, but they wanted us to uh, do addition of all the number and give us the output. So if, uh, if it is uh, like this, for example, if they have given X is equal to Y is equal to and Z is equal to then you can directly you can uh, create a new variable called c and you can write x plus y plus z right it's very simple but it's not like this it's given inside a list you have to pick one number after another and then you have to add it together so it, it's not directly given as x y z correct so in that case what you have to do you have to go for for loop because we have n number of items you have to repeatedly add it to the next item so for first you will take one and then you have to go to next number two and then add it to one. You will get some output. Then you have to go to next number three and then you add it to the output here. So it goes on like this. It, it, it repeats, right? If you have something which is repeating, the same action is repeating, then you will be obviously go to for loop. So here, what I'm going to do, I'll create a, maybe I'll create a new variable list sum and initially i'll give zero so what i'll do list sum is equal to num plus list sum so initially list sum is zero what i'm telling you are going to get the first number right when you get the first number add it to the list sum so one plus zero is zero so zero uh, sorry one plus zero is one so one will be added here in the list sum okay the next time it goes and reads two again this operation is performed now list sum is equal to num is two and what is there inside list sum one is there inside list sum right So first it creates, let's call this as a memory. So it goes like that. So we have something called list one in memory and then we have list sum. And we have number, okay? So first, first what happened, it goes and read list one and it finds multiple num uh, items, it saves all the item and then it goes to line number two list sum it initially it is zero so then it goes to for loop for num in list one so initially it takes number one right the first element the num num is now one in list one so it does this operation list sum equal to 
so here it is not going to take the value this is a variable assignment right so only the operation here it will go and check in memory in this clips it's not going to check in memory what is there here this is variable plain variable so it is going to find what is num num is one and what is less sum it's zero so what happens after one plus zero it does the operation one plus zero as one so it is going to say one inside less sum right so inside less sum it is one now correct so again after doing that it goes to the for loop again line number three this line and now the number is two correct the next item in the list so for number two it goes to this line less sum is equal to number is now two less sum is now one so two plus one is three three is now saved into less sum so three is now saved into less sum okay and then again it goes for loop until it finds empty here it is going to repeat this right so next number is three so it's three and this line is less sum is equal to number plus less sum number plus less sum is now six so it is going to replace six here so it again it goes in fix number four so here it becomes four and four plus six is ten so it goes on repeated and finally it will find uh, the addition of all the number will be there inside less sum correct so what i'll do i'll print after it does everything so print should be out outside the for loop So it should it should look like this. Let me execute. So it is telling the addition is 55 20 30 40 50 yeah 55 so here what if i move this print here inside this for loop only so here it is outside for loop right so this is the only thing whatever is indented whatever the space is given is only inside for loop this is the next different line but if i move this if i give indentation here and if i move this inside what happened so after each list sum it is printing so initially it is one initially it is zero right but we are not we are doing some addition here so it becomes one initially it becomes one it is printing one then initially it is one then three then six it goes on then it reaches 55 then it is empty so it is coming out of for loop but if i wanted only the output the final output then i have to move it outside because after this it, after the for loop is done no whatever it done when the list is empty then it will go to the next line outside the for loop whatever the line is there it will go to that particular line and do that if there is nothing there in that line then it will terminate the program if there is something and some other logic trailing then it will do everything got it
guys you understand the logic with for like what is the syntax how that's used in program in python any doubts in for loop Relief, Sam, Rajita, any doubts? Tilly, do you have any doubts? Okay, okay, got it, guys. So we can wind our session here today. Uh, so I would say install Tony and also execute some for loop inside it because for loop is like it repeats continuously, right? initially uh, to get hold of it it will be difficult it will take some days like you have to continuously write program on for loop then you will understand but initially it will be difficult to grab what is happening inside for you can use tony initially then you write different different programs and you will be be an expert in for loop Okay. So yeah, guys, we can leave. We can end the session here. You guys can leave. Have a great day.